The pharaohs, revered as gods among men, indulged in pursuits far removed from the divine. They didn't just have one wife, many had a bunch, and some even married their sisters to keep the family in power. The rulers of the Nile often succumbed to the darker temptations of power. In a society where pharaoh's word was law, unchecked desires led to decadent and sometimes disturbing pastimes. From extravagant feasts that mocked the plight of the common man to grotesque displays of power and cruelty, the lives of these god kings were marked by excesses that defy belief. In the heart of ancient Egypt, within the confines of palaces where hieroglyphs whispered secrets, the pharaohs engaged in activities considered scandalous by modern standards. The lives of these ancient rulers were governed by the belief that they were living gods, their actions ordained by celestial will. This belief system allowed, even encouraged, marriages within the family, seen as a way to maintain the purity of the royal bloodline. The deities Osiris and Isis were siblings and spouses, their union symbolizing the harmonious balance of the universe. Emulating these divine relationships, pharaohs like Akhenaten, Tutankhamun, and even the famed Cleopatra VII married their siblings or close relatives, entwining political strategy with religious doctrine. Consider the Great Pyramid of Giza, a monumental testament to Pharaoh Khufu's reign. But behind the grandeur of his achievements lay a personal life enshrouded in mystery and intrigue. In keeping with royal traditions, Khufu is believed to have married his half-sister, Meritites. This union was not just about preserving the royal lineage, it was a reflection of the divine order, echoing the sacred marriages of the gods themselves. Their son, Pharaoh Khafre, the visionary behind the second largest pyramid of Giza, and the enigmatic Sphinx, followed in his father's footsteps, marrying his sister, Kamer Nebti I. These marriages were not merely a familial tradition, but a means to consolidate power and assert their divine right to rule. Beyond the sacred walls of the palace, polygamy flourished. Pharaohs like Amenhotep III didn't limit themselves to one great royal wife, but extended their marital alliances to foreign princesses and multiple concubines. These marriages were strategic, strengthening diplomatic ties, expanding their influence, and ensuring many heirs to the throne. Yet the personal lives of pharaohs were not without their dark corners. While royal marriages flaunted divine sanction, extramarital relationships, especially among commoners, were severely condemned. A chief workman named Paneb, known for his immoral conduct, is a stark reminder of the strict social norms that governed ancient Egyptian society. His adulterous escapades with married women, far removed from the sanctity of royal unions, reflected a culture where sexual transgressions could lead to severe repercussions. In contrast to the common folk, the pharaohs indulged in what can be termed filthy amusements. The Turin erotic papyrus, a controversial artifact, depicts explicit sexual scenes, suggesting that sexuality, at least within the royal circle, was an open and perhaps celebrated aspect of life. This blatant display of sexuality, likely reserved for the eyes of the elite, offers a glimpse into a world where royal desires and fantasies were unbounded by the moral constraints imposed on the commoners. Divorce and remarriage, while common among the pharaohs, were more than personal choices. There were maneuvers in the ever-changing landscape of power and alliances. A pharaoh could easily discard one wife for another if it meant better political advantage or a stronger claim to the throne for his offspring. These filthy amusements of the pharaohs, ranging from incestuous unions to blatant displays of sexuality, paint a picture of a royal lifestyle that was lavish, unbounded, and often shocking by today's standards. But the indulgences of the Egyptian elite weren't confined to their private lives. They extended into a legal system that was as severe as unforgiving, reflecting the extreme measures taken to uphold divine and royal authority. In ancient Egypt, the shadowed corridors of power were ruled by pharaohs who wielded a system of justice that was as divine as it was dreadful. The law, seen as an extension of the pharaoh's will, was deeply intertwined with the belief in a holy order. Crimes against the state or individuals were regarded as disruptions to this sacred order and were met with severe retribution. The system's heart was the concept of BT3, or crime, with capital offenses deemed as great crimes worthy of death. In this realm, where divine, royal, and mundane intertwined, the pharaohs stood as the ultimate arbiters of justice, embodying both judge and jury, and their verdicts were irrefutable. This era, particularly the Ramesside period, was marked by vivid examples of such harsh justice, chronicled in royal decrees, administrative texts, and private writings. 
The punishment in ancient Egypt went beyond mere physical harm. A guilty verdict could strip an individual of their honor and social standing, turning them into a social outcast, a fate as dreaded as physical punishment itself. Additionally, common sentences included forced labor, especially for deserters or those banished to Nubia, who likely faced grim conditions in gold mines. The approach to crimes such as theft was particularly severe. Stealing temple property, for instance, could lead to the death penalty or harsh beatings, underscoring the sacredness of these sites. Tomb robbery, especially of royal tombs, was seen as a crime against the gods and the pharaoh, often resulting in death, sometimes without proper burial rites. This punishment was feared by all Egyptians who believed that proper burial was essential for a peaceful afterlife. Adultery and rape, crimes of a personal nature, were treated with a moral ambiguity. The primary concern in these cases was the offense against the woman's husband, with the woman's rights often deemed irrelevant. Women initiating adultery faced social and financial ruin, while punishments for men remained less documented. Court procedures in ancient Egypt were a blend of administrative and judicial tasks, often led by the vizier. Trials were expedited, with confessions sometimes extracted under torture playing a crucial role. The term SMTR for torture, which means to investigate, underscores the merging of interrogation and punishment in these trials. The pharaoh's methods of punishment also served as a public spectacle and a warning. Criminals could face terrifying ends, such as being fed to crocodiles, underscoring the pharaoh's authority over both the natural and supernatural realms. These displays were not just about punishment, but were also imbued with religious significance, reinforcing the pharaoh's role as the earthly embodiments of the gods. Harem Conspiracy One of the gravest crimes in ancient Egypt was against the state itself, treason. Labeled as great abominations, these acts were seen as direct affronts to the pharaoh and by extension the gods. The infamous harem conspiracy against Ramses III exemplifies this, a plot orchestrated by his secondary wife, Tie, and a court official, Pepecomen, to assassinate Ramses III and place Tie's son Pentawar on the throne ended in bloodshed and betrayal. The king's murder, a calculated act of cutting his throat, was a stark reminder of the problematic nature of court politics. The consequences of such treacherous acts were as severe as they were diverse. Those found guilty in the harem conspiracy faced not only the wrath of the state, but also a terrifying array of punishments that were both physical and psychological. The worst offenders were sentenced to death, a fate often met through brutal and public methods designed to serve as a warning to others. Some culprits were impaled, a torturous end where the body was mounted atop a wooden stake, left to the mercy of gravity and time. This gruesome spectacle, often carried out in public spaces like temples, was a testament to the pharaoh's authority and the gravity of the crime. Others involved in the conspiracy were subjected to disfiguring mutilations. Having one's nose and ears cut off was a typical sentence, a punishment that went beyond physical pain to include social stigma and humiliation. In ancient Egyptian society, where appearance and bodily integrity were closely tied to one's identity and honor, such mutilations were a fate worse than death for many. They permanently marked the individuals as criminals, ostracized from society, living reminders of the cost of treason. For a select few, the mercy of suicide was granted. This option, though seemingly lenient, was fraught with its terrors. It was a forced choice between a possibly prolonged, agonizing death and the act of taking one's life which in Egyptian belief could have damning consequences for one's afterlife. It was a grim choice that left the condemned to wrestle with their conscience and fears in their final moments. With its intricate web of deceit and brutal aftermath, the harem conspiracy lays bare the harsh reality of justice in ancient Egypt. It was a system where punishments were not merely retribution, but deterrence, control, and reinforcement of the pharaoh's divine authority. The terrifying details of the punishments meted out to the conspirators serve as a dark reminder of the lengths the pharaohs would go to maintain their grip on power and order in the kingdom.